Good morning. What's all this building and planting being talked about? Our reading today is in Jeremiah 31, verses 38 to 40. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that the city shall be built for the Lord, from the tower of Hananel to the corner gate. The surveyor's line shall again extend straight forward over the hill Garib, then it shall turn toward Goath. And the whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields as far as the brook Kidron to the corner of the horse gate toward the east shall be holy to the Lord. It shall not be plucked up or thrown down any more forever. I hope you have a Bible nearby. If you turn toward the back of your Bible, almost most Bibles today will have a, a bunch of maps in there and they'll have a map of the city of Jerusalem. And you can look at where the different walls are and where the Kidron Brook is, and where the Valley of Hinnom is, and you'll, you'll immediately get some clarity on that. The locations given in these lines all involve Jerusalem. Walls would be built in making the city larger, and we know where some of those walls are from excavations. What I find most interesting is the part about the dead bodies in the ashes, because we know where that place is. If you look at the map of Jerusalem, on the south portion of the city, just outside, there's a valley that goes down. Jerusalem's kind of on this on this elevated location, Mount Moriah. And uh, there's a place there along the south called the Valley of Hinnom, or the Valley of the Sons of Hinnom. This was the town dump for many years. This was where they threw a garbage out and refuse. When the nation was at the depths of apostasy, this is where they would burn their children, their little infant children, and send them through the fire. Imagine that. At that part, just outside the city walls, that's where they had human sacrifices. How terrible, how tragic. Right outside the city of peace. Amazing. The devils must have laughed. But look again here at Jeremiah's prophecy. The whole valley Jeremiah saw would someday be holy to the Lord. So now this is speaking of a final restoration of Jerusalem to purity and prosperity. And God seems to have given the prophet Jeremiah a view of what it would look like in that day of restoration. A beautiful place, holy and pure and no children passing through the fire in the valley of the sons of Hinnom. Jeremiah sees the restoration of God's people. He sees this complete triumph of God's kingdom and all these vestiges of evil totally eradicated. Sure, Satan makes many pa pagan and heathen attempts to establish himself even there in God's capital city, but that's okay. God wins in the end. Of course, the devil tries. But this prophecy shows not only will God's people return from captivity, but God is going to totally triumph. There'll be nobody in the grave anymore. They will not be plucked up or thrown down anymore forever. What a promise. What a beautiful day for Jeremiah to be shown in, in vision from the God of heaven. And there's a time to pray. Dear Father in heaven, there is a day coming. It's, uh, history is not a big cyclical business that goes on over and over again the same ground. But Lord, instead, you're bringing your people on, on a pathway from one thing to another definite thing. We want to be in your plan, Lord. So use us along the way. Please complete your plan for your glory, for your help us to know our part in your plan, Lord, each one of us individually, because every single person has an important part in your plan. Thank you. We could ask for you to use us even this day, Lord. We have our duties of the day planned and we want to get those going, but Lord, also make divine appointments for us, connections, little occasions where we can speak a word in season to someone who needs to hear more about the ultimate triumph of good over evil through Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we can be sure that when God is finished, Satan will be completely defeated and there will be no worship of false gods and Nobody passing through the fire. That'll all be ended once and for all, finally at the very end. It'll be entirely established that those false gods don't even exist. The facts will be absolutely clear, and Jesus will be absolutely victorious as Lord. And so today, in your life and mine, may Jesus be Lord.